The next campaign, systematic campaign, amen, is servants armed and trained. Genesis 14 verse 14, and when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed and trained his servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Amen. So he did what? He armed and trained. He armed and trained them. Yes. Now, an armed person is different from an unarmed person. I went somewhere to preach one day. And as I finished preaching, I was walking in the corridor to the pastor's office. Back. Then I came back the next day. There was a lady who was smiling. Bishop, this. Then the pastor said to me, this lady is armed. Armed and dangerous. And when he told me that this lady is carrying a gun on her, as you see her moving around like that, I saw her differently. So, oh! Now, when you are in the church and you are a servant of God and you are armed, you'll be taken differently by the, by the enemy because you are armed. Yes. And then trained. Trained. If you watch this movie, Taken. When the guy took his daughter, the guy said, the taking man, what's his name? Yeah. He told the man on the phone that I have a set of skills that make me dangerous to people like you. I have a set of skills. They have a clip. Oh, yes. Where's the clip? I don't know who you are. Oh, yes. Now, as you are here, all right, you don't have a set of skills, all right, and you don't have, you are not armed, and you don't have a set of skills. You are completely different. But if you have a set of skills, and you are also armed, then you are a completely different human being. And so, the servants of God in the church, all of you who are servants of God, we are trying to do two things according to Genesis. Number one, we are trying to arm you spiritually, not physically, not with physical guns. We are trying to arm you, and number two, to train you to have a set of skills a set of skills that said that if we drop you by parachute anywhere, once you arrive there, you start to use your set of skills and your arms that you have been armed with and it starts to create a church and win souls and do the work of God. That's all. That's what it means by servants armed and trained rather than leaving the people in the church as just pure servants who are not armed and who are also not trained. We want, we want all the servants of God not just to be servants like these three young men. Hello, hello, hello. Obed, smile, Obed. Uh-huh. And then Joseph, smile, Joseph. Uh-huh. And then Nathaniel, smile. What happened to your tooth? See me after about your tooth, eh? Open, smile, let me see. Yeah, missy. See me after. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm looking well to, to my sheep. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. I need you not to be just a servant of God, but I need you to be armed and dangerous. And I need you to have a set of skills. Let's look at this man talking. You are going to be a nightmare to the devil. You are going to be a nightmare to the devil and to the kingdom of darkness. We are sending you as nightmares to the kingdom of darkness. Wherever you are located and you are found, you become a nightmare. Hey! And he said, a set of skills I've acquired over a long period of time. And that's why sometimes your training takes a long time. Sometimes years go by and you are being trained and you are developing a set of skills that you acquire over a long period of time. A set of skills. Skills that make me a nightmare to people like you. Wow. He said, if it's money you are looking for, ransom. I can tell you I don't have it. I don't have it. That one I don't have. I may not have my silver and gold have I none. But such as I have a set of skills that I acquired from Jesus. That is what I can give to you. Wow. Play it again. Play it again. He said, I have a particular set of skills. A particular set of skills. Yes. That I have acquired. And so, I want you to have a particular set of skills. Amen. 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 You are going to have a particular set of skills. How to lead the art of Leadership, how to shepherd, the art of shepherding, how to follow, the art of following, how to be a good general, a good general, how to minister, the art of ministry, how, uh, how to lead, how to lead people, how to make people follow you gladly, how to make people obey you gladly, how to make people obey you when you are not with them. How to rally people around you. How to take people with you to the top. A particular set of skills. That is what we mean by servants armed and trained. Not just servants existing. And unless we train you and teach you like we are doing so at this camp, you never really realize what skills you don't have till when you have them, you realize that I didn't have it before. That's why someone who has been a pastor of a a church before and goes to another church, usually the church becomes large almost immediately because he's already acquired those set of skills from the years that have gone by. Then it starts already from that level of set of skills. Yeah. So instead of just being there playing with no skills. Now you see, what is it like to be no skills? When you have no skills, even in the ministry, you, 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 you never, ministry will never lead to prosperity in your life. You see, let's take skills. If all you can do is to harvest pepper, harvest tomatoes, but somebody has a skill of making an iPhone or making a television. He knows what to do to join this and that and that and then the light will come on. Wow. Wow. He knows how to do this and then to become a bulb. 
Whereas all you know how to do is to harvest corn and to weed. You don't have any skills. So prosperity is always connected to the skills you have. That's why you see some, the lack of knowledge, lack of innovations, lack of skills are always causes of poverty in countries. All the African countries, we, can, we lack skills. We lack skills. We don't have the skill of doing this or doing that or chicken farming, this farming, that. That we don't have the skills. Even the skills of leadership are not there. The skill. We say, oh, Ghanaians are, like, Ghanaians are not different from any other country. Yeah. Ghanaians are not more corrupt than any other country. People say, oh, Ghanaians are corrupt. Ghanaians are just like every other, every other nation. It's the skill. You know, it's like, it's like maybe going to a zoo. And then you walk through and then a, a, a lion bites you or a leopard bites you as you are walking through. I say, ah, Ghanaian leopards are really some way, the way the Ghanaian leopard beat me and so on. I don't like Ghanaian leopards at all. Ghanaian leopards are really whatever. No, you have not developed the skill of keeping the leopards that are in Ghana in cages or in a proper enclosure. Yes. Because modern zoos don't have animals in cages. They have them in a, in a place, in a way that the animal cannot come out. But sometimes you'll be standing there, the animal is here. But what it is is that he can't jump over a certain distance or he can't climb a, maybe a vertical wall. Or so. so you'll be standing here and you'll be looking at the animal right there. But they have the skill of knowing how much the animal can do. So now you have also decided to make a zoo. Do you understand? Using such strategies, you let the animal will be here and you will also be here and walking. Then when it jumps out and bites you, you say, ah, Ghanaian lions are not good at all. Ghanaian leopards like, they like meat. Ghanaian leopards like attacking human beings. No, you have not learned the skill of keeping a leopard, a lion, an antelope, and all of them in one house. That's the art of leadership. So you need skills. In, in, in Cuba, when they uh, were at a point, is it Cuba? They were ha- uh, harvesting uh, sugar cane and then also harvesting tobacco. The side of the island that they had one side that was harvesting sugar cane and one side was harvesting tobacco. The side that was harvesting sugar cane was poor. And the side that was harvesting the tobacco was rich. And the difference was that, that that the people who worked there, they all harvesting. But the difference was that the sugar cane, we just, they just use a cutlass like that. And then they just mow it down. But the tobacco, they had to cut the leaves specially like that. So they, you need a skill to cut and so all the workers on that side were richer than the ones which have no skill. They just mow down the thing with strength. <laughs> Once there is a skill involved, you get it. You get richer. And once you have skills, you are important. Once you have no skills, you are not important. So if you come to Anakazu or you come to the Bible school, or you come to church, or you come to camps, and you come to be in the church, and you are not able to still acquire the skills. And how do you acquire the skills? You acquire the skills by becoming a bus center leader and being able to bus. You can't bus people here in Ghana. You can't bus people in Anakazo. You, where are you going to bus them? Are you going to bus them in Peru? Are you going to bus them in Chile? Are you going to bus them in Brazil? Well, you can't bus right here in Mampong. You can't bus at East Legon. You can't bus at Dansoman. But you, it's a skill to bus people. It's a skill. And that's why I, I have a particular set of skills. So when you see skillless people, skillless, and you see a poor person, in any field, you lack, you lack skills. You lack, you're just there. You don't have the skills. The skill of preaching. I'm preaching to you. I'm leading you. 
I'm preaching to you. It's a skill. It's a skill. To preach is a skill. Yeah. Without that skill, I'll, I'll not be there. I'm invited to uh, uh, Argentina to go and use my skill of preaching. That's how come I know the, the hours that it takes to fly from Dubai to Argentina is 19 hours. Because it's a, it's a journey that I have to make. 19 hours. They just want my skill. They don't, they don't care that I'm a doctor. They don't care about my family. They, don't want, but they want me to fly so far to use my skill. And we are trying to help you to have a basenta, a basonta, to be a center leader, a center leader, to do something, and you are resisting, you are resisting to learn a particular set of skills that make you a nightmare to the devil. That one too is a problem, and it has become a meeting. It has become a meeting and a discussion. And you live through the church, you never learn the skill of praying. It, it is a skill to pray for a long time. If you don't have the skill, you can't do it. Oh, you will never pray for a long It's not natural to pray. It's not natural to talk to somebody who doesn't answer. I said, shh. It's not natural to talk to somebody who doesn't answer. It's like preaching. You see, preaching is like that. When you start preaching, they don't answer back. So you have to have something to say for a long time without stopping. It's also a skill which also you have to learn. The people will be looking at you. Different faces. Different expressions. Yes. It's a skill. Yes. Every standing. Every standing. Hmm. Are you there or you are leaving? Yeah. Every standing. Hey, somebody sitting there still. Who is that? So, a particular set of skills. Yes. Those who make basketballs, footballs, compared with those who make golf balls. I think it's basketballs made in uh, Guatemala or so, and the people who make golf balls. The difference is vast because the making of the basketball is so just sew the leather together and so on, and, and that is it. And the golf ball is made of something. So those who make those balls, and those who make these balls, those who make these balls, far richer, because they have far more skills. Yeah. Yes. Skills, having a particular set of skills, mm -hmm. it always makes you valuable. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Oh, yeah. One time I went somewhere, a certain country, and the security guard came to work for me. And some people came around. He lifted them with their trousers and just put them on the side. Of us. Then later I saw him lifting the car. I saw him lifting the car. And I realized that this man has a set of skills. So I told him, follow me. And he followed me. <laughs> Oh, yes. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Hmm. Fantastic. Number one, 
Servants armed and trained ensures that every member is trained in the word of God. Amen. Now, to be a servant armed and trained, you must be baptized into the teaching. You must be immersed in the teachings. You, know, you must not just have heard it before. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 and 2 says, Moreover, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They were what? Baptized. baptized. That means they, 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 they went deep. Amen. Amen. It's not just about, oh, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. But you need to be baptized into your leader's teachings. They were baptized into what? Moses. If you are part of this commission, you must be baptized into my teachings. Yeah, you must be immersed into it. Yeah. My books are there. And my teachings are there. You must baptize into it. You must know it even better than me. It's not just, oh, I've heard that before. Oh, I listened to that message once. Oh, I was there when he taught it. That's different. If you knew, it would bring forth a fruit because the word is a seed. Luke 8, 11. Now the seed is the word of God. Yes. The seed is the word of God. Look at it. The seed is the word of God. If you are baptized into it, it will, there will be some fruit. So you don't know it yet. If you know it, there will be fruit. Because the seed is the word. The word is a seed. It's actually a seed that is being sold into you. Yeah. You actually don't know it. Also, I know that I was there. I was at that camp. Oh, I was supposed to do a video. If you were, and if you knew it, you would be bearing fruit. Yes. Bring forth fruit of repentance. You know, the other day God was showing me that hell is a good thing. Yes. Hell is a good thing. Yeah. Because it is the just, divine justice that God feels that this is the best thing for these people. Yes. It, how can it not be a good thing if God feels that this is a good place for such people? Yes, and he has actually made it. <laughs> and you see, I was thinking about it. Why would God make a place like hell? Because it looks like that's the most appropriate thing, and the right thing. And you see, we always defend ourselves. But it's coming a time where you can't defend yourself. And the realities of your life and your actions will be judged. Because we are always getting away with our excuses. But there's going to come a time when you're talking, your reasoning, and your examples, and your whatever will not work. And what is appropriate for you will be given to you.
You know, I watched a documentary in, of a man. Are you with me? Yes. I'm talking about being baptized yes. into Moses, yes. the, the teachings. Yes. yes. Being deep in it and, and not just saying things. Oh, I know this, I know this, I know this. We have to be truthful. Yes. You know, there was a man called Ivan the Terrible. Ivan the Terrible. I don't know whether my stories are boring to you. And this man, he is one of the people who killed Jews and slaughtered them. And one day, they found him in America. He's the last person who was ever found. They brought his ID card. They brought everything. And they brought the man to Israel. They arrested him and deported him. And they brought him to Israel to try him. Do you know what he said? He said, it's not me. That, that's all. I mean, for seven years. He said, it's not me. I am not the person. I'm not the person in this picture. Yes. People stood and said, this is the man. He did this, he did this, he did this. He said, it's not me. I'm not the one. (laughs) Oh, yeah. He maintained his defense to the end. And in the end, he was found guilty and he appealed. And when he appealed, they set him free. Yeah. He said, it's not me. He said, I'm not the one. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is that you can say so many things and insist on it, but it's actually the case. I don't know if it's the case, but I mean, the people stood and they were crying. All the Israelis joined the world. Oh, crying. Look at this man's kill. They've killed them thousands, millions. He said, I'm not the one. I said, I'm not the one. His family, his children, they all came say, our father is a very nice man. He can never do all the things you are saying. <laughs> but with God, the decision will be taken. You can't argue anymore. All your deceptions will be gone. And that's who you are dealing with when you are dealing with God. So those of you who claim that you know the teachings, you know the word when you don't know, you read the books when you don't read, you pray when you don't pray, you say you pray when you don't pray, you are spiritual when you are not spiritual. Everything is not real. I just want you to know it is in this world and in this life in before human beings where you can say, I'm not the one. For seven years they'll be pointing to you explaining and you'll be saying, I say look, I am not this person. I was never there. (laughs) And he gave them work to do for seven years. Huh? Yes. And when he was set free, he was arrested again. And he was sent to Germany. To try him, and whilst he was in the middle of the trial, he died. And you know how long he lived? He was in his 90s. Yeah. And it's like, it's almost like this a man is healthy. He's strong. Even when he brought him to the court, he was lying down. So he can't, he can't open his eyes. I mean, everything, they carried him there still. <laughs> oh, the guy is something. When, when they were talking, he would, he would just be laughing. I said, I'm not there. Why? Look at this. I was never there. I was never there. (laughs) I am the terrible. You know, it made me see the nature of human beings. We like to deny realities, truths. You say it's not true. It's not this. I'm not this. And maintain the lie to death. So now, when he died, we're asking that, has he been found? He said, no, if you are in the middle of a trial and you die, it is, you are, not, you are not guilty. Wow. 
Yes, because the trial didn't end. But before God, you see, and God who blesses, God who answers, God who prospers, God who promotes, he is the one you are dealing with. And as you, 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 you live a lie, and as you deceive, all right, and as you claim that you are immersed and baptized into Moses, when in fact you have just touched the river, but you have never gone inside. And you are not deep into the word, and deep into the makane, and deep into the teachings. You are dealing with God. You are dealing. You know, God rewards us in public for what we do privately. Ask your neighbor, are you Ivan the Terrible? Or, I mean, who are you? Are you the one or you are not the one? Servants armed and trained. It's important that you have a skill. A set of skills. Skill in the word. Yeah. You know, one time somebody was saying, why, why, why should we preach from the books? Why can't the Holy Spirit, can't we ask the Holy Spirit to show us what to preach? Do you see? And you see, that question only reveals that you are not deep into the teaching because whatever you want to teach, whether it's for marriage, whether it's about life and death, whether it's about salvation, whether it's, what about, whether it's about money, whatever, it is already in the books. It is right there. There is a body of teachings. There is a doctrine that we have. So when you say, can't we last the Holy Spirit? The, the book is there and the Holy Spirit can also give you further illumination on exactly what is there. So don't be deceptive. It is your lack of knowledge of the teachings that make you say that, can we not ask the Holy Spirit? I said, oh, that is why we are reading from this man of God's uh, 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 manual or teaching to, to teach this. Because you don't know, you are not immersed, you are not deep. That is why you are even asking that question. The question you are asking reveals that you are not deep. You are not baptized into Moses. You know about Moses. You've heard of Moses. You've shaken his hand before, but you are not baptized into Moses. Oh, yes. I can't be a pastor in Bishop Oye Post Church because I'm not baptized into his teachings. I can't, I, I can't, I'm, not, I'm not fit him in a certain way. Because I'm not baptized. Before I realize I'm talking about loyalty, I'm saying this, I'm saying this, I'm saying this. His topics are things like understanding the, unveiling the, the mystery of, the, the mystery of kingdom stewardship. That, that's the topic. Unveiling the mystery of kingdom stewardship. Part one. Part one A. Part 1B, part 1C, part 1D. Each service is 1A. The next week is 2A, B, C, D. Yes. Unveiling the mystery of kingdom stewardship. So if I join Winners Chapel, I have to be baptized into these things. And my, even the topic that I will bring, do you see, will be something like understanding the mystery of kingdom stewardship or kingdom serv serv uh, service in the kingdom or it will be something like that or the, exactly the same thing. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. No, I will not have a topic, stir it up. <laughs> huh? You knock in the palace. <laughs> Preparation of the gospel. <laughs> you, know, you can go to whatever I start talking about, you knock in the palace. Lessons on loyalty. Uh, how can I say thanks? Or how can I say thanks? I hope you are understanding what it means to be baptized. Ask your neighbor, are you baptized into the teachings in this house? I'm trying to help you to be armed with a set of skills. 
Amen. Number four, servant arm and train ensures that every servant is trained with multiple experiences. Multiple what? I can't hear you. Multiple what? Experiences. Jeremiah 48 and verse 11. Jeremiah 48 and verse 11. Yes. Moab has been at ease from his youth and he has settled on his lees and has not been emptied from vessel to vessel. That means you have moved from cooking pot to another cooking pot. You have moved from this bottle to this bottle and this bottle to that bottle. Say, Why can't I be in this bottle? I'm used to this bottle. But no, we are moving you from this bottle to this bottle. Why can't I stay in that same bottle? I say, you, you have been at ease. You don't know what it's like to be poured from one place or to be transferred. One of the ways to bring out devils is to transfer people. When you transfer them, then you see what they are made of. Yeah. Many of the people that have become rebellious and orangus, they became rebellious and orangus upon being transferred from one place to another. I'm telling you. And if you don't want to be transferred and you are a pastor of full time, then don't work in the church. Work at the Ministry of Health where you'll be also be transferred to Ho, or you'll be transferred to Hohoi, or you'll be transferred to Tamale, or wherever. And you prefer that transfer to the transfer that happens in the church. Because you prefer, you believe that the secular bank can transfer you, GN bank can transfer you from Winneba to uh, Panda, Pandai. And you are okay with that. You're okay with that transfer, but you're not okay with the transfer in the church. You've never worked anywhere before. You don't know anything about working. And he says you have been at ease. You've been at ease. You've not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Neither have you gone into captivity. Captivity means where you are restrained and you can't do what you want. You can't do what you want. You are captured. Thank you. I met somebody. I said... What time do you go to work? She said, I leave at 5 a.m. And I drive to Barclays Bank in those days. And I park my car at 6.30 in the car park. And I sleep in the car park. So that by, I, I, I arrive at 6.30 or 7. So that by 8, I'm walking to the door. Otherwise, I can't, I can't get there. So they have to leave at dawn. Sleep for the rest in the car. The children will do homework in the car. The children have to do homework. They are in the car three hours, two hours to drive from Adenta or wherever to Barclays Bank on High Street to work in the, to work in the bank. You've never worked before. You've never worked before. You don't know the captivity in the world. You don't know what it's like to be empty from vessel to vessel. You don't know what it's like to really work somewhere. What it is involved in real life. That is why you complain. He says, therefore, his taste remain in him. That means that he's still a spoiled brat. That means his scent is not changed. He's still as he was. He's not matured and developed I mean, maturity in life. About the realities of life. You don't just have what you want. So this place is too hot. There are many places that are too hot. There are many places that are too cold. There are many places that are not how we want them to be. You are a child. And that is what we train you so that you are hardened. There's nowhere when we send you that you will start talking in a funny way. That's why we said training your servant, you move you here. Okay, do this here. Do that. The other day I was asking for Debo. On, on Sunday I was like, where is Debo? And I was told that he's now an usher. I said, ah, it's good. It's good that he's an usher. Yeah. He's gone from vessel to vessel. Yeah, do you know the boat, one of these dancing uh, guys? Yeah. Yes. Your bad attitude when you are spoken to, when you are corrected, when you are sent from one place, is an, an also an attitude.
attitude to be rebuked is an experience. You've never been spoken to before. You've never been shouted at before. You've never had somebody tell you to your face that you are smelly or you are ugly or you are wrong. You've not had it before. Only praises. You are looking nice. Oh, I like your this. Oh, you are this. Oh, very nice. That's what you are used to say. And my father never told me that. Your father was a phlegmatic. He didn't use to confront issues. That's why he never told you certain things. But when you come to the house of God, you will be emptied from vessel to vessel. We are not afraid of you. We will tell you what it is. I don't know if I'm speaking to the right uh, crowd. I think I have to go to, uh, to speak to find some other people. Tell somebody, I'm ready to go from vessel to vessel. Tell another person, you have been at ease for too long. Tell the person, you've been at ease for too long. Amen. Now, Seventh Armed and Trained Campaign ensures that every servant of God is armed with books and messages. Amen. Books. Now, Paul said, and the books. He said, when thou comest, the books and the parchment, which I left at trust, but especially the books, when thou comest, bring them. Especially the parchments. Bring them. Paul was armed and trained by God. He was trained and he was armed. And what was he armed with? Books. When the, Paul quoted most from Isaiah, the number of quotations that he had from Isaiah, even Jesus started his ministry by quoting Isaiah and believing that the prophecy that he was reading in Isaiah was applicable to him at that moment. He said, the spirit of the Lord is about this scripture is fulfilled today. I believe that what I'm reading, Isaiah 60 verse 1, is applied to me today. I believe I receive it. And that was the beginning of his ministry. Believing in Isaiah's Isaiah, Jesus. That's how he launched his ministry. He believed a verse in Isaiah. He just took a verse in Isaiah and believed it. Paul was armed. Paul was armed. And Paul was trained. Because in Philippians, he said, I have learned to abase and to abound. I've learned how to abase. I've learned how to abound. I've learned how to be up. I've learned how to be down. I've learned how to be in every circumstance. I've been trained by God. Yes. I know it. I know how to abase. I know how to be low. I know how to stay in a, in a small room. I know how to stay in a room without a carpet. I know how to stay with a carpet. I know how to stay in a room with a fan. I know how to stay with an air condition. I know how to stay in every circle. I know how to eat what I want and to eat when I don't have what I want. But you, you are not yet trained. But Paul said, I know how to abase. I know how to abound. I am instructed to be full, to be hungry, to both abound and to suffer need. I know how to suffer. I know how to survive. That's why when the young man said, Bishop, we are tired, though. I, I understood him. Because he's being trained. You are tired. I said, yeah, but you are driving a car. We used to walk, you know. We used to walk from Ridge to Osu to Labadi. When I'm going for meetings, I walk. We, we're not taking car. We walk. From Ridge, you walk to Osu, then I'll go and see my friend off to Labadi. Do you know Labadi, where our la church is and beyond inside? Then I come back to Osu. This is how we walk. We walk up and down all the time. There's no car. We don't think of cars. 
What are you talking about? Who we'll walk from Adabraka to Osu to all over the place? Teaching. Beautiful. I know how to do it. I know how to abound, to count money in the church, to, to, sweep, to, to wipe the floor, to do all the, the, the works in the church. And I know how to abound. I know how to sit in a black cab. I know how to go to London. I know how to go to Brazil. Multiple experiences. Armed and trained. Armed and trained. Armed with books. You must have, everybody here must have every book on your phone. At least, if you don't have an iPad, your phone. Every book that I've written, you must have it. Including the new ones. You must have all. It's there. Armed and trained with the Makane, the Bosco, the Poimano, Yugalizo. They are all equipment. The man said, I have a particular set of skills. I'm trained. There are things I can do. There's equipment I have. And when he went, he came with a suitcase with equipment. When he sees the guy, he knows how to do it and join it and make it a gun. Yes. I'm trained and I'm armed. I'm trained and I'm armed. I'm trained and I'm armed. I have a particular set of skills. I'm a young man. I'm only 24. I'm 23, but I have a particular set of skills. The church I belong to, they take me for training. They take me for camps. They gave me arms. I was armed with book. I was armed with Makane. I was armed with Bosco. I was armed with revelations. We are training softies. Softies. Softies and spoiled brats. Children of rich people who don't know anything hard. Everybody has a television and DSTV in his room with an air conditioning and carpet with Wi Fi. You have your own Wi Fi in your room. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a softy and you don't know ministry is not like that ministry is not like that our greatest people are the missionaries yeah they go everywhere and you see them they are happy there they are happy there our missionary in Congo Ru Rudy eh? yeah Rudy Oh, yes. He knows how to stay in Kinshasa and all over Congo. But, you know, he didn't, he, he lived in Switzerland. Yeah, all his life. When he speaks French, it's not this, je suis, uh, 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 je m'appelle, it's not a, uh, uh, no, 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 it's the, it's the French, the French friend, uh, je suis, uh, 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 <laughs> oh yes mm -hmm. but he's very comfortable in Kinshasa and over there that whole realm there by the river oh yes he used to work in the top banks in Switzerland Yes, Credit Suisse, and those are the banks. That, that, those were his realms. Oh, yes. He's comfortable. He said, I've, he's got, he has a set of skills. Tarama Superspaladash. I have a set of skills. <laughs> I have a set of skills that I've acquired over a long time. Are you listening to me? I said, I buy a set of skills. I've acquired a set of skills. Yes. <laughs> Acquired a set of skills. Yeah. That I can I can abase and I can abound. And I'm armed. 
Yes. I'm armed with the book called The Gift of Governments and Loyalty and Disloyalty. I'm armed with a book called Those Who Leave You, and Those Who Accuse You, and Those Who Forget, and Those Who Are Dangerous Sons, and Those Who Are Ignorant, and Those Who Pretend, Those Who Are Proud. I'm ready for all of them. I have a particular set of skills. Play that man again. Play the man again. Play the man again. He said, a very particular set of skills. I want all my children to have a very particular set of skills. Yes, 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 yes. You'll be a nightmare to the devil when you arrive in any town. Yes, there will be nothing that is too whatever for you. Yes, there will be nothing. To not go, this is like this, this is like that. I can't do this, I cannot do this. I said, no, I have a very particular set of skills. Yes. Even the skill of communicating well, speaking well, answering questions. Yes. Telling the truth. Yes, I have a skill of telling the truth. You never find me telling a lie. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. And then, servants armed and trained are armed with messages designed for pastors. What does that mean? It said, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds or speak to the shepherds. So there are messages for shepherds. Now listen, as we close, we are closing now. But as we close, I want you to know, amen, that there are messages. Amen? Are you listening? That are for pastors. And shepherds. Yes. Yes. Everybody say, I have large collections of audio messages. I have large collections of video messages. I have books. I have audio books. Do you have the audio books as well? Get the audio books. All shepherds. These are weapons, special weapons for those who love the Lord. Amen. And God is going to use you mightily. God is going to use you greatly. Yes, because you are a servant who is armed and trained. And we are going to be constantly raised up and trained with a set of skills, skills that will allow you to do the work of the ministry. Yeah. The skill of dodging evil. Yes. You know, one day I was watching one pastor. There was a lady. And the lady was, um, he called the lady. And he asked the lady whether she was married. She said no. And he said, you know. And she confessed. She said, I slept with 20 pastors. She, she, has, she knows their name. She knows all of them. 20 pastors. Oh, yes. 
20. She said it on, in the microphone. I was watching it. Yeah. So, the scale of living with ladies maybe some have even targeted you and that you are even the reason why they are still in the church the reason they haven't left is because they haven't finished with you put your hand on your head God forbid God forbid 